Happening right now, first at four, Motive, a massive federal investigation now underway into why a Canadian citizen stabbed a Flint Airport police officer. Happening right now, cleaning up, Cindy makes landfall and is still causing trouble. Happening right now, hello humidity, along with warmer temps, Andy's weather authority forecast is coming up. From the breaking news and weather authority, this is News 10 First at Four. What was going through my head seeing a, a, a colleague, a good friend of mine, uh, being attacked and stopping it as quick as I possibly could. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kirk Montgomery. First at four on this Thursday starts with an update on yesterday's stabbing of a police officer at Flint's Bishop International Airport. You just heard a colleague of Lieutenant Jeff Neville describing what it was like to see his friend be stabbed in the neck. Just moments ago, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Detroit held a press conference to give an update on the suspect charged in that attack. We have learned that 47-year-old Amur Fatui apparently tried to buy a gun but was unsuccessful and bought a knife instead. The U.S. attorney says the attack was not part of a wider plot and Fatui acted alone. He was charged with committing violence at an international airport yesterday and is being detained without bond. The FBI is still conducting interviews and gathering evidence and have yet to decide if more charges will come later, including terrorism. As for Lieutenant Jeff Neville, he is said to be in stable condition. Friends and co-workers describe him as in good spirits and he is expected to recover. Earlier today, the director of the Bishop International Airport spoke about the bravery of his workers, particularly an airport maintenance worker who helped stop the attack. And I'm not afraid to say I believe he saved Jeff's life. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, I'm proud of all of our responders um, and I'm especially proud of him because he jumped out there and uh, uh, did something that uh, is courageous. Um, I'd like to say we'd all do the same thing, but I can't even say that I, I would. So I, 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 I can't thank him enough. There will be an interfaith prayer service for Lieutenant Neville in Flint tonight. It is being organized by the Flint Islamic Center and will take place at Wilson Park at 6 o'clock. News 10's Scott Wolchek will be there. So look for that story coming up on News 10 at 6. One of the former MSU football players charged with sexual assault is headed to trial. A judge decided today there is probable cause to continue with the case against Austin Robertson. He is accused of raping a girl after a party in April. His accuser testified today that she verbally and physically tried to get him to stop. The judge also authorized a second criminal sexual conduct charge based on the alleged incident. Robertson's attorneys asked that his tether be removed so he could continue his education and athletics at a junior college in Mississippi. The judge denied that request. Robertson is due back in court on July 5th. The other former MSU players charged in a separate sex assault case aren't due back in court until September. Josh King, Demetric Vance, and Donnie Corley Jr. are accused of raping a girl in January. One of the two brothers charged with the attack on a state trooper is headed to prison. 21-year-old Michael Barber of Indiana was sentenced to at least 14 years behind bars. Police dashed cam captured the February 20th incident in Berrien County. That's near the Indiana state line. Barber charged Trooper Gary Guild after crashing his motorcycle during a police chase. Barber's half-brother then pulled up and joined in the attack. He is awaiting trial. Two drivers pulled over and helped stop that attack, allowing the trooper to arrest them. One of the dozen people injured in a multi-vehicle crash on US-131 yesterday has died. Police have identified him as 20-year-old Lawrence White of Kalamazoo. He was a passenger in the vehicle that crossed the median and hit two other cars in the opposite direction. Four other adults and seven children, ranging in age from six months to 13 years old, were injured in the that accident. None of their injuries are life-threatening. The cause of that crash still remains under investigation. Hundreds of people attended the funeral for 22-year-old Otto Warmbier. In the